Hi guys, I'm Lena and welcome to my all analog photography channel. I never thought I would be doing a video on this topic, but here I am completely out of my comfort zone. So this video is not going to be technical at all. It's more about all the mistakes that I have made and how you can learn on them. The story behind this product, the Polyworm Tone Emulsion, is not straightforward and it dates back 10 years ago and many of you guys know it. But for those of you who don't, let me give you a little bit of background. It used to be a wonderful paper from Forte, but unfortunately, like many other wonderful products, it was supposed to die in the digital revolution, but then Adox jumped in and managed to save the recipe and I believe some part of the production of this emulsion. And they thought that it would take just one year to bring this emulsion and the paper back. But here we are, 2011, there is no paper yet turned out that making a silver gelatin product from zero, even if you have the recipe and the machines, is so extraordinarily complicated. But finally, in 2019, almost 10 years after the start of the Polyworm Tone Resurrection project, there was the first successful coating in Switzerland. And I was there and you can watch this video where I was making the tour of the Swiss factory. But uh, Corona corrected the future plans. Any other coatings that were scheduled to happen last year did not because there was really no possibility of reaching Switzerland. And the options were to just sit and wait until Corona is over. And right now, at the moment of recording this video, it's not. Or do something about the knowledge and the know-how and the ready emulsion. So that's where the idea of releasing just the emulsion came up. And honestly, I was not the right person to pitch this to. I did take those alternative uh, techniques classes two of those classes, and it just did not work out. Everywhere where the emulsion was separate from the support and I somehow had to unite them, it was such a miserable failure. And I didn't like those alternative processes and they did not like me back. So as you can imagine, when I got a jar of polywarm tone emulsion and a task to test it, I was not excited, but what wouldn't you do for your husband, right? So the emulsionist showed me how to coat papers and I tried it and I did it with a brush and I got a really nice image with those brush strokes. It was actually better than I expected, but it was nothing that really caught me. But then I tried coating the emulsion on the textile and printing on it. Most of you guys know my Instagram and TikTok and I was posting my very first experiments there. It was really starting from zero. And when I saw this little print on the textile, it was just wow. I wanted to do more of it. So I ordered tote bags from Amazon, little pouches for cosmetics and a ton of textiles and started coating and testing and printing. So now I do enjoy printing with this emulsion and I have to state I am doing this voluntarily. There are two other products which can be used along with the poly warm tone emulsion, which are the gelatin undercoat and the hardener. Now, do you absolutely need those products? Yes and no. The gelatin undercoat is really good if you're printing on something like ceramics, bricks, especially on glass. And some papers, they actually soak a lot of emulsion, but some papers don't. And you don't really need a gelatin undercoat. Adox has the Art Barita paper and it already has a gelatin coat on top. And I was using that paper, it's wonderful. Also, a gelatin underlayer allows you to use less emulsion because it doesn't soak as much into your textiles. And uh, in general, the emulsion spreads better and you're more sure to have no patches. And what's good that the gelatin you can coat in broad daylight and you see what you're doing and you dry it in broad daylight. So you really have a very good foundation. Hardener is more of a must, I would say. In general, I simply like using it. It's no extra bath. You simply add it to the stop bath. But I also did some prints on textile. Those were just tests, but I simply put on emulsion no hardener, nothing. I just process like normal. You just have to be very, very careful. For emulsion coating, apart from a jar of poly warm tone, you will need another light tight black container, a fork, a brush, and a bucket of 45 degree water. 
You don't want to melt the entire emulsion jar, because after four warm-ups it might start losing speed and fogging. Cold emulsion is like jelly, so a spoon will not work, you will need a fork. After getting out the necessary amount, you can start warming it up. I bought this cooking device from Amazon and it works just great, but it lights up blue when it works, so I have to turn it off when opening emulsion jars. It was not the super smartest buy, so maybe a still temperature control unit is better. Or you can keep an extra bucket of super hot water, almost boiling one, nearby and monitor temperature all the time, adding a little bit from this bucket to the main one. But here you have to be very careful to not surpass 45 degrees. At 50 degrees this emulsion will start fogging. Melting in a transparent jar is not the smartest idea, because cause an extended exposure to red light, you guessed it right, fogs our precious emulsion. Before coating the gelatin or the emulsion directly, using tape to create a clean frame is a very good idea. Light yellow tape on white textile is barely visible under red light, so either use dark tape or mark the corners with a pen. Focus your enlarger on the textile and not on the table or paper, because textile is much thicker. You absolutely need a plastic support under the textile, because it soaks and messes up whatever is under, which can be the other side of your tote bag. When coating, some people like dosing with a syringe, but I kinda got used to pouring the emulsion right on the textile, especially with a gelatin undercoat. It does not soak super immediately and spreads quite even. All textiles react different. I cannot give you a universal smart rule. Of course, the emulsion adheres better to coarser textiles, but you might also get a very patchy spread. While on other textiles it spreads super nice, but then also while processing some emulsion does come off. So there is always a trade-off and you have to test on your specific support to figure it out for you. Textiles should dry hanging with nothing touching their backs. Otherwise, you will get dirty patches of emulsion on the reverse side. And I had those when I decided to dry my tote bags stuffed with plastic trash bags. I thought that this way they won't touch the other side, but in fact, it was a very, very bad idea. Drying should also happen in complete darkness. And some textiles can dry in two hours, but some need up to seven. And it very much depends on the room humidity too. So if you don't have a completely light, tight, separate dark room, then maybe you should consider some other supports like glass, ceramics or other paper. And you can find some ideas for drying in non-ideal drying conditions in the Arox Poly Warm Tone brochure, which I will link below this video. So, we are doing a test trip, just like a normal one. When you're ready to print the final object, take your time to carefully position it while the enlarger projects the image with a red filter. And here the little marks that we made on the tape before will help. Then remove the red filter and hit go. By the way, you can also dodge and burn just like on normal paper. The best is to process face down. This way you reduce red light exposure and make sure the developer goes evenly over the emulsion. I'm usually also doing content for TikTok or Reels, so I am forced to process face up, but it's not the smartest practice, honestly. Theoretically, after developer and giving time for the chemistry to drip, the emulsion can go directly into hardening stop bath. This can work with glass or paper, but in case of large pieces of textile, so much developer gets transported into stop anyway that it kills the bath much faster. So I always take an extra effort and rinse the print and everything around with a slow stream of cold, importantly cold water. As you can see, when the emulsion is face up, I remove my strong red light to avoid fogging. I also rinse after stop, just to have my chemistry live longer and happier. Also, please use gloves or tongs for any contact with the chemicals. The emulsion is really soft and delicate until it has been dried, so be very gentle even while washing. A very good idea is to give an extra thioclear bath, which removes fixer faster and shortens the washing times. 
to conclude, I would like to answer the most popular question, which is, can you coat uh, this emulsion on t-shirts and whether you can machine wash your textiles? And the answer is this emulsion is exactly the same that you have on your high quality darkroom papers. It is designed for artwork and not for wear. The fact that I'm doing it on things that I'm using afterwards, it does not mean that it should go into a washing machine. I wouldn't put my prints into a washing machine. An emulsion is a delicate product. There is like real silver inside and real science behind making it actually work in the high quality how it is working. So if uh, you are doing it, you might as well treat it with care, which means no detergents on top. And there is a product that you can put on top. It stinks crazy, but it does work and it protects your image. And even without protection, those images they wear pretty well they become hard and this is the answer to the question about t-shirts you really don't want to have such a hard surface next to your skin it's just unpleasant but on bags on jean jackets it works great so this bag i have been using and abusing i don't know if you can see how dirty it is actually i should wash it but if i wash it around and some water gets on this print nothing is gonna happen really in moderately warm water it is gonna stay this emulsion is not gonna come off and i have here here i'm keeping my hard drives uh it's also but this is a different textile and to this one the emulsion adhered so well like i'm not advising you to do this but this is just to demonstrate that it really holds nicely i had no gelatin undercoat here and um no protection layer, absolutely nothing. Also, this image is sepia tone. The poly warm tone emulsion is especially great for toning. It responds to toners, Mwah! fantastic. But of course you have to dry the print first and then bleach it and uh, retone it because the emulsion really hardens only after it's dried. If you do too many manipulations while it's wet, you might have some emulsion lift off. So your shadows will lose their thickness and depth a little bit. But otherwise, as you can see, it withstands toning extremely well. So as a person who was involved into making this product, like uh, the designs, the marketing ideas, uh, the we didn't do much actually. I just wrote the instructions <laughs> and shot the video, but that's uh, about it. But still, I think I was way too involved to have uh, a real critical review, even though I find little critical about this product i kind of liked it anyway i will leave it to other people out there on the internet to review and have their opinion i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and i also hope that you are subscribed to my channel and following me on instagram tiktok and i don't think i have any other social media and i hope there will be no other social media where i have to be present because i much prefer being in the dark room anyway see you in the next video bye